Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of Black and Gold Weekly. I am your host, John, and it is episode 23 of the show. As the Boston Bruins' second-round playoff series against the New York Islanders is underway and rolling along here. I am riding solo this week, recording this on Thursday, so by the time everyone sees this on Friday, Game 3 will have happened. But as of me recording this, Game 3 has not happened yet, so keep that in mind throughout today today's episode. Um, so a lot to talk about here as the playoffs roll on and the Bruins' second round is underway. They currently are in a 1-1 series after splitting the first two games with New York, and they are heading to New York for games three and four. Um, before we get into it, I just want to give a huge thank you to Mark Allred and the entire team at BNG Productions. This show, which is in partnership with Black and Gold Productions, would not be happening without them, so a big, big thank you there. And also, I want to bring some attention to the description of the video, there are three links in the description. The top one is for Boston Bruins Apparel. The second one is for NHL Apparel, whichever team you would like. And the third one is for NCAA College Apparel. If you are in the market for any of those things, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. You could check out and see what's offered there with those links. There's tons of different products. Um, so much awesome stuff to choose from. Hats, shirts, sweatshirts, uh, sweatpants, t-shirts, long sleeves, and then tons and tons of all other kinds of accessories as well. A huge, huge market of stuff there for all of those different categories, whether it's the Bruins, whether it's a different NHL team, or whether it's a college team. You can so show your support and rep their gear and apparel by checking out those links in the description. So... I would really mean a lot, but let's get into it here. Taking a look at the Boston Bruins' first couple of games against the New York Islanders. Then we'll talk about the injury slash lineup situation a little bit. And then at the end, we are going to look ahead at the rest of the series, kind of see where things are looking like they're going to go from here between the Bruins and the Islanders. So it's been a really, really good series so far. Um... Uh, obviously, they were able to split the first two games in Boston. The Bruins got out to a big win in game number one, 5-2 on home ice. But the Islanders were able to come back in game two and steal an overtime win from the Bruins in Boston. So they are now headed to New York with a 1-1 series tie. So while we... Uh, why don't we take a deeper look into the first couple of games here, starting with game number one, obviously, uh, pulling up all the stats. And, and Boston definitely outplayed the New York Islanders in game number one. Um, Boston outshot the Islanders 40 to 22. They were better in the faceoff dot. They were perfect two for two on the power play. There was over 90 combined hits in the game. It was a good playoff game. It was a fun game to watch, and the Bruins got the job done on the back of a big third period, which was able to really help them get the win and uh and take control of or get that take control of the first game and get that first w under their belt so the islanders actually came out and scored first in the first period anthony bavillier scored on the power play um he put the he put a nice shot in behind tuka rask and the islanders got out to the early lead in this one but the bruins were able to answer on a goal from david posternock Late in the th first period, there was less than 30 seconds remaining when Postronk was able to score for Boston. That was also a power play goal, and that tied things up heading into the intermission, which uh, really helped out for the helped the Bruins out quite a bit there. And rather than being down heading into the first intermission, they were able to go in tied. In the second period, David Postronk scored again. He put the Bruins up two to one. And uh, that was a big goal to give the Bruins the lead, their first lead of the game, their first lead of the series, obviously. Um, and David Postronok showed that he is really starting to heat up here and get hot for Boston in these playoffs. And uh, he put home his second of the game. 
But the New York Islanders answered very shortly after, only about a minute and a half later. The Islanders answered on an absolute bomb from Adam Pellick. His first goal of the playoffs, he was able to put it past Tuka Rask. And he tied this game back up at two. And uh, that is how they went to the second intermission. These teams uh, were very, very tight through the first two periods. There was uh, a lot of back and forth, and Boston was definitely the better team. They were heavily out shooting the Islanders, but they were uh, they were having trouble getting the pucks in the net, and the Islanders were hanging around, and we know that New York is a dangerous team when you allow them to hang around. Then we went to the third period, and this is where Boston took over, and the Bruins had a very, very strong third period here in game number one, which uh, they certainly needed. Um, given the, you know, the fact that you do not want to drop game one on home ice, you do not want to get down in a series, especially when you're the higher seed that usually spells trouble. And they made sure that they came out in period number three and we're going to win that period. And we're going to win this game. And Charlie McAvoy got the uh, third goal, which ended up being the game winner for the Bruins, um, he absolutely blasted one from the point by Ilya Sorokin, put the Bruins up 3-2, to two, and uh, Boston never looked back from there. Once they got the lead, they kept it. David Pasternak, late in, later in the third, was able to add an insurance marker and finish off the hat trick as um, he he put the Bruins up 4-2 to two with a really nice goal and uh, a, a great shot to finish off the hattie there for Pasta. And it was really great to see all the hats come flying down out of the stands again and, you know, have everyone in the crowd so pumped up and, and jacked into it. And just the building was almost full and it felt like it. And it was just an incredible moment to have, you know, a full TD Garden back like it was and to have all those fans there, the crowd really juiced up and jumping and that whole building was rocking and for pasta to finish off the hat trick and us to see the the rain of hats coming down again and just things really did feel back to normal in that moment and uh it was awesome to see and then that put the Bruins up by two that pretty much put the put the game away it Bruins in the driver's seat but with, you know, four or so minutes left, you know, there's still time for the Islanders if they get a quick one. The goal that really just ended the game was Taylor Hall's on the power play. His third goal of the playoffs, and uh, he made it 5-2 Bruins, put them up by three, and that, that completely just ended the game, ended all hope for the New York Islanders. And uh, that was a nice, nice to see Hall get on the scoreboard there, and Boston took home a, uh, a pretty nice win in game number one. They controlled most of the game. Uh, they played extremely well in the third period, which I think is a really important thing for a team in the playoffs uh, to be a good third period team. It was tied heading into the final frame. Bruins were able to just completely take over and get the job done in the third um, it was overall a really good performance for them. Really no complaints for me about Boston in game number one. And uh, I think that it was a, a really impressive win. And they did, a, uh, they did a great job of getting out to an early lead in this series. So that was game one. And then we moved on to game number two. And uh, game number two was uh, a little bit, little bit uh, closer. Whereas Boston, I think... Um, you know, had really controlled game one and was the, definitely the best team in game number one. Um, game game number two, they were not at the same level. The Islanders certainly picked their game up in game two, and um, it was you know it was a it was a closer back and forth affair. And the Islanders had a really strong second period. The Bruins once again had a really strong third period, but in the end, the Islanders were able to come out on top with an overtime win. So looking at the team stats here, the Bruins once again outshot the Islanders, but it was much, much closer this time. The they, Bruins uh, got 42 shots. The Islanders got 39. So Isles really upped their game and upped their um, shot totals from game number one. Bruins still right around 40 shots. I mean, they're never shy about throwing the puck to the net. Um but the big thing, I think, was that the Islanders were much more involved in this game offensively in Game 2 
than they were in game number one. Face-offs were 51-49 for the Islanders, pretty close to being split there. Special teams continues to play a huge, huge role in this series and uh, in, in these first couple of games. In game number one, the Bruins were two for two on the power play. The Islanders were one for two, or one for three, excuse me, and the Bruins won that game. In game number two, the Islanders were the team that scored two power play goals. They went two for three on the power play. Boston went one for two in game two, and the Islanders were the team that was able to win it. So the power play goals are really coming up big in this series. And we've seen a lot of them already. Both of these teams are firing on the power play right now. Once again, there were over 90 combined hits between the two teams. 48 for the Islanders, 47 for the Bruins. Um, very good hard-hitting physical playoff game. And uh, this game was this game was a little bit more of a roller coaster as a Bruins fan. So Charlie Coyle comes out and scores first for the Bruins to put them up one to zero. And um, that was how the first period would end. Coyle's second goal of the playoffs. I mean, he's definitely had a disappointing year this year. And, um, you know, you, you've, we've wanted to see more from him as this entire season really has gone along. But he comes out, he gets the Bruins up early in, in game number two here. And it was, uh, it was a, you know, back and forth first period. But the Bruins were able to take a lead into the locker room. Then the second period came, and it was all Islanders in the second period. New York, um, man, they, they had they had a heck of a second, and they came out. They scored three goals in period number three. Josh Bailey scored on the power play. He is having a hell of a postseason for New York so far. Um, Kyle Palmieri then scored for the Islanders to make it a two to one Islanders lead and put them up for the first time in this game. And then uh, J.G. Pajot, with his uh, second goal of the playoffs, uh, was able to uh, to come in and score another a late second period goal to put the Islanders up by two. It's another power play goal for New York, and um, you know that put the Isles up three to one heading into the third period, and they were in control at this point. They were in complete control of the game. Um, they had the lead. All they had to do was play lockdown Islanders hockey, and they were looking good to come out of game number two with a win in a series split. Then the third period came around, and, well, the Bruins continued to be a very, very good third period team. And they get a goal from Patrice Bergeron to cut the lead to one, make it a 3-2 to two game about halfway through the third. Bergeron's fourth goal of the postseason. He's had a really, really good playoff so far. And um, Bergie really came out and, 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 you know, that top, those top players for the Bruins were not going to go down without a fight. And um, he was able to get the Bruins back within one and, and put, get them back into the game. And then Brad Marchand on the power play, his fourth goal of the playoffs, he scored with about five minutes to go in the third period. And that tied the game up. New York and Boston was then tied 3-3, three to three, and the Bruins came back. They were down by two in the third. They came back. They tied it up at three. They forced overtime. And then we get to overtime. And Casey Zizekas comes in and puts the game away off of a brutal turnover from Jeremy Lawson and now everybody I think know knows what happened uh, I think most people watching this will have seen it um, you saw what happened to with the with the pass into the middle from Lawson there it goes off a skate gives Sezikis a breakaway he goes in beats Rask and the game's over and Sezikis gets his first goal of the playoffs the Islanders get their first win of the series and we are going to New York now with a 1-1 series tie. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm, I don't want to... Listen, Jeremy Lausanne has struggled at times this year. He's still a very young defenseman. Um, there's still a lot of developing left to go with him. Um, but I don't want to harp on him too much because, listen, mistakes are going to happen in the game of hockey. And mistakes are going to happen in the NHL. Even though they're playing this game at the highest level, things are going to happen. And everybody's turned the puck over at some point. Everybody's made a bad pass. Everybody's made a bad play. 
It just it just so happened that for Lausanne, unfortunately, it happened in overtime of a playoff game, and it re- directly resulted in a breakaway and a goal against. So, um, you know, obviously a tough play there, but if you're the Boston Bruins, you've got to pick your heads up, move on, and and you know really build off the good things that you did in the third period of this game. I mean, I think that the Bruins deserve a lot of credit for coming back from being down 3 to 1 against a very tough defensive team like the New York Islanders. Um, they're not an easy team to score on. And uh, for Boston to be able to come back and win the third period and get that game tied up, that shows a lot about the Bruins' character and their ability and and how well they're they're doing in the third period of games at right now. And uh, if you're going to be a third period team, that is generally going to mean good things in the postseason. But um, also, obviously, it's easy to blame Lausanne for, for the goal there. And I mean, his turnover did directly result in the goal against. But the Islanders outplayed the Bruins the entirety of overtime. Even before that goal, the Islanders were the teams get were the team getting more chances. The Islanders were the team getting better chances, and they were really controlling the play in the in the overtime period. So they honestly kind of deserve to win that game, turnover or not. They deserve to win that game. So you know, I'm gonna give obviously credit to the Isles. They were able to come out and steal a game on the road and. Get a big, uh, get a big win there in Boston and tie this series up. But uh, let me tell you, this uh, this is going to be a long series. I think um, these are two very evenly matched teams. These are two teams that play very good games for the most part against each other. Um, th- these are teams that I think are probably going to place at least six, if not a seven game series against each other. And um, nothing is going to come easy for either of these teams in this series. And I think we've seen that through the first uh, through the first two games that um, nothing is going to be easy here. Both teams are solid defensively. Both teams get gr- great goaltending. Um, big thing has been special teams. Actually, the power plays have played a massive role in this uh, in this series so far both teams have three power play goals already in the series the team that has scored multiple power plays in a go- in the in a game have won each of the first two games in game 1 it was the bruins with two power play goals they won the game in game 2 it was the islanders with two power play goals and they won the game so special teams are playing a big big role in this uh, in this series and um I certainly expect that to continue. Um, you're going to need to get goals from your power play. And on the other end, if you can start killing some penalties, if, say, if any of these teams can get their penalty kills hot and start killing off some penalties, that could play a big role and make a big difference in which team is able to win this series and uh, and which one is going to be going home. But this has been a good, good one so far through the first uh, couple of games. I think it's going to be a good one all the way through. These teams play each other really, really tough. They're both built well for playoff hockey. And uh, I think that there's, um, there's a lot of great things to, uh, to look at here with, uh, with these two teams. And uh, I think it's going to be a really fun series all the way through and with a, a lot of fun to watch. So game three is tonight, the night that I'm recording this. Um, on Thursday, and uh, by the time that this show comes out on Friday, we will know what happened in game number three, but I would not be surprised if they once again split in New York, and we go 2-2, and then it basically becomes a best of three coming back to Boston in games five, six, and seven, but I certainly expect this series to go a long, long way, and um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and good hockey to watch without a doubt, so Those are games number one and two so far in this series, and uh, we'll see what happens coming up. I want to talk a little bit about the Boston Bruins injury situation slash lineup because um, there's there's a few things to talk about. Um, Kevin Miller not yet ready to return. Bruce Cassidy has said that, so um, Kevin Miller will continue to be out of the Boston Bruins lineup. Tuka Rask has a, they straight up admitted that Tuka Rask has a lingering injury. Um, Bruce Cassidy said that a few days ago that, um, that Rask is still dealing with a lingering problem. And while Rask has been good in these playoffs, it hasn't, um, hasn't been overly noticeable. I don't think it's really affected his play too much. Um, he's had a good, good postseason so far. 
Um, if this is something that gets worse, that could become an issue for the Boston Bruins. Because, I mean, obviously, I have I like Jeremy Swayman a lot, and I think he's a very, very good young goaltender, and he played absolutely phenomenally in the uh, in the regular season this year. But I don't necessarily think you want to be relying on a rookie goaltender with only a handful of NHL games under his belt to be, you know, playing games late in the playoffs for you. Um, you know, that that's just... I, I'm not saying it's for sure not wouldn't work out, but it's not generally a situation that you want to be in. So um, the Rask injury is definitely something to watch. I mean, they weren't specific about what it was or anything like that, but they did straight up admit that he's dealing with a lingering injury. And um, that's definitely something to, to keep an eye on as a Bruins fan, because, you know, if this were to get worse or if he was to tweak it and it becomes something more serious, we could be seeing Jeremy Swayman playing playoff games for the Bruins. And again, it's not that I don't like Swayman. He had an incredible regular season. I just if you're deep in the playoffs and you're playing a game number six or seven against the Islanders or if you make it past the Islanders and you're playing a team like Tampa Bay wouldn't I think you would rather have your experienced veteran goaltender in that than a rookie who's only played you know 10 to 10 12 NHL games in his career I think you'd rather have the veteran guy there even though the rookie has played really well when he had when he's been in um just I think experience wins out there and I I personally wouldn't feel great about going into a series against the Tampa Bay Lightning or the Colorado Avalanche with with a rookie goaltender. I just that for me personally, I'd rather have Rask. So, um, you know, that's definitely something to keep an eye on as as we move forward here, and uh, and take and, and these playoffs go deeper. Hopefully, hopefully nothing comes of it. Hopefully, it's just a a minor thing that will with a little bit of rest in the off season will be fine. And it's really no big deal at all. I just thought it was interesting that Cassidy came out and straight up admitted that Tuka Rask was pretty much playing through an injury and that he did have some lingering issues. Cause you really don't hear that too much, especially in the playoffs in hockey teams generally don't give anything as far as injuries are concerned. And for the coach to come out and pretty much just straight up say it that, um, that that was interesting to me. So definitely something to keep an eye on. And the other lineup thing is um, obviously Jeremy Lazan. So, you know, do you keep him in the lineup? He has been struggling recently. Obviously, he had the really bad turnover in game two that led to the overtime goal against. But at the same time, he's a young defenseman. Mistakes are going to happen. Um you know, you've kind of rode with these young guys through much of this year. You know, how much would it really kind of hurt his confidence and hurt his development if you were just to yank him out of the lineup um, for out in healthy scratch him because of that mistake? You know, that's that's a that's a tough spot for Bruce Cassidy to be in. And the other thing is the fact that Kevin Miller is still injured. So who are you going to be putting into the lineup if you do happen to take Jeremy Lawson out? Does Jakob Zaboro come in? Does Tenorti come in? Does uh, does Stephen Kampfer come in? Like, you know, what direction would you go in if you were to take Lawson out of the lineup? And it's really a question of should you take Lawson out of the lineup to begin with, or do you let things play out? He's a young player. Mistakes are going to happen. Everybody knows that. However, mistakes in overtime of playoff games, you know, that that does really hurt the team. And and, you know, you really can't have it. So what what is the line between letting Jeremy Lausanne just continue to go and, and develop and try and learn from his mistakes and and grow as a player? versus, you know, the fact that you really can't have guys making significant mistakes in, in late in playoff games and costing your team playoff games because, you know, you have to win these games. So that's definitely a fine line there between the, the two sides of, you know, you got to let the players play and you've got to let them learn and you've got to let them grow and develop. But at the same time, they can't be costing you games. And, you know, you've got to win now and you've got to win in the playoffs. Now is not the time for to be making rookie mistakes. Now is not the time to be making rookie mistakes in the Stanley Cup playoffs. But at the same time, you've you've rode with these young D-men through the entire season and 
you know, th these are your guys that you that you got here with and that you want to keep continuing to grow with. So that's a fine line. It's definitely a tough choice for Cassidy. Um, I have a feeling Lausanne is probably going to play. Um, I think he's going to play game three, but we'll have to wait and see Thursday night whether uh, whether he's in the lineup or not. But uh, I do I do have a feeling that Cassidy's probably going to keep him in and just say, hey, you know what? The best way to respond to something like that is to come out and get in the next game and play a hell of a game. And if you can do that, if you can bounce back and have a big game, then, you know, that that kind of resets things and gets you back on, on the right track and headed in the right direction. And I think that Cassidy will probably give Lausanne the opportunity to do that. However, if he comes out and struggles again in game three, then I certainly don't think that he'll be there in game number four. Um, I, I don't think Cassidy's shy about making lineup changes or, or doing, uh, doing things like that to kind of uh, to kind of shake things up and, and put the best team out there that is that gives them the best chance to win on any given night. So game three is going to be big for Lausanne if he does play. It's going to be important that he has a solid game and gets himself back on the right track for sure. But those were just a few things I wanted to touch on. I also want to take a look just kind of um, at the Bruins and the Islanders and just their overall rosters and how they're looking right now. Uh, both teams are playing well, obviously. They're, they're here for a reason. Um, they're getting good goaltending. They're getting solid team defense. And they're scoring. Both teams have had the offense going in the postseason as well. So just uh, some standout guys and some things that I noticed as far as the Bruins go. Um this uh, this postseason is that their top line and their best players have been their best players. I mean, David Postronk leads the team in points with 10. He's got five goals and five assists. He's a plus five. Patrice Bergeron has seven points. He's got four goals, three assists. He's a plus three. Charlie McAvoy, Boston's t best defenseman by far. Um, seven points in seven games, a plus six rating. He has been awesome. Brad Marchand's got four goals and six points. David Krejci's got five points. Taylor Hall's got four points. I mean, Boston's top players have been their top players. And um, that's that's a big reason why the Bruins are where they're at. And they're into the second round. And they're in a good series here with the Islanders. Because the big guns have showed up for Boston. And they've also gotten decent contributions from some of the depth guys. Nick Ritchie has four points. He's had a good postseason. Charlie Coyle and Jake DeBrusque each have two goals. Craig Smith has a goal and two assists. Grizzlick has a goal and two assists. So like they've they've gotten some good help from other guys as well, but their top guys have been their top guys and that is really really important for the Boston Bruins and um that's why they've been successful so far. As far as the Islanders are concerned, over here on the Islanders side of things, there's been one thing that has really stood out to me about the New York Islanders. It is that their top line has not been great in this postseason. They are being driven by their second and third lines. The Brock Nelson line and the J.G. Pajot line are the lines driving these New York Islanders. It is not Matthew Barzal. Matthew Barzal's actually kind of had a pretty lousy playoffs. He only has four points in eight games. He's a minus three, and... Um, he hasn't he hasn't been all that good in this postseason. And when you look at, you know, he's playing with with um Jordan Eberly, who's got two goals and three assists for five points, but is also a minus three. And he's playing with Leo Komarov on his left side, which again, I I've said this on my off the wall channel. I don't understand that whatsoever. But Komarov only has two points in the playoffs and is a minus one. And obviously doesn't really he's not a top six guy I I don't really know why he's playing on the first line but um that top line that first line for the for the uh for the Islanders has not really been their first line and Barzal has struggled Eberle's put up some points but has been out there for a lot of goals against and Komarov is Leo Komarov he doesn't really do much so it's really been the Brock Nelson line, the second line, in the third line with J.G. Pajot and Kyle Palmieri that has really bolstered this team to being 
um, the, the team that is, is here in the second round and a chance to advance to the final four. Um, you look at Brock Nelson, he's playing with Josh Bailey and Anthony Bavillier. Um, Nelson and Bailey both have seven points. Bavillier has nine points, which is tied, tied for the team lead. That, uh, that line has been incredibly good offensively. And then the third line with JG Pajot, Kyle Palmieri, and now Travis Zajac, um, it was Oliver Wallstrom, but Wallstrom got hurt in the Pittsburgh series. Um, so it's now Zajac on the third line with, with Pajot and Palmieri. But Pajot has nine points and is a plus six for the Islanders in these playoffs. He's uh, he tied for the team lead in points. He's over a point per game. J.G. Pajot has been awesome for New York in this postseason. Kyle Palmieri, he didn't do a whole lot after the trade deadline in the regular season. It definitely seems to have taken him a little bit to get going in New York, but man, has he shown up for the playoffs. Four goals, five points, and a plus four rating through the first eight games. Um, his Some of his goals have been really, really important as well for the Islanders. So Paul Mary has, has had a really good postseason. So it's really been the second and third lines for the New York Islanders that... Um, that, that have really driven this team. And obviously they're playing well defensively too. Uh, Pellick and Pullock are both workhorses on the back end. Scott Mayfield, I know Islanders fans don't like Scott Mayfield and they like to rag on him, but he's actually had a really good playoff so far. Um, Nick Letty, I don't think has been effective as he could be. Um, I actually think Letty's kind of had a down postseason. But uh, Dobson and Green... Haven't uh, haven't been too bad either. So the Isles the Isles are a tough team. They're a very deep team, and while they don't have like singular superstars standing out the way some other teams do, they uh, they get contributions from everybody in the lineup, and and they're really able to kind of play everybody, and and they're able to rely on many different players to to be good at certain times, and to they win as a team. They're a team. That really comes together and wins a plays a team game and wins as a team. So that was uh, something that I noticed. The big thing that stood out to me though was that that top line for the Islanders really hasn't done a whole lot. It's really been about the Nelson line and the Pajot line for New York, and uh, th that, those are the guys really carrying this team offensively. So. Now the final thing that I want to take a look at is the schedule ahead for the Bruins. Obviously, um, this series is continuing now. Uh, game number three on Thursday night. Let me get the schedule pulled up here. Uh, game number three on Thursday night um, at 7.30 in New York. We'll see which team's able to get out to a 2-1 lead in this one. Then Saturday at 7.15 p.m., Nash excuse me, nationally televised game on NBC uh, between the Islanders and the Bruins for game number four. Then on Monday night, the series shifts back to Boston for game five, where there will be a 6.30 p.m. start on Monday for the Bruins and the Isles. And then uh, game six and seven, if necessary, will be on Wednesday and Friday. So much like the first round, um, the second round schedule is just a very consistent game every other day for the Bruins in the Isles um, after the two-day break here between games number two and three. So that's the only deviation from that every other day. Um, we're in it right now. And then once we play game number three uh, tonight on Thursday, then it will just be every other day the rest of the series. So consistent schedule. Um, going to be fun to see which team's able to take this. Like I said, I'm expecting this to be a very close series. I would not at all be surprised if uh, this one goes to the full seven. And we do have a game on Friday night, the 11th. Um, that would not surprise me one bit. And um, overall, just uh, I I'm excited for the rest of this series. I think the first two games have been fun to watch. They've been entertaining. It's been good hockey. And I fully expect that to keep up all the way through. I think these are very evenly matched teams. Um, they, they're both very well coached. They play good defensive hockey. They have the talent to score some goals as well. Special teams are obviously playing a huge role um, so far in this series. But it's been a fun one so far. So 
Um, really looking forward to the rest of this series. And by the time we get to next week, uh, and I'm recording episode number 24, we're going to have um, at least four more games to talk about, if not all five. So actually, no, it wouldn't be five because Friday night is game seven. So we'll have games three through six, up to six, to talk about uh, next week um, on, on the show. And the series may be over by then. It may not be. We don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see how three, four, five, and potentially six go. Um, but what I do expect is a lot of one goal games, a lot of very close games, a very hard fought series, and uh, one that I think is going to be very, very fun and enjoyable to watch the rest of the way, just like the first two games have been. So um, that is going to finish things up here for episode 23. The Bruins and the Islanders in the midst of their second round series now. Uh, currently tied one to one. We'll see what happens here tonight in game three. And then we'll see what happens as the rest of the series goes along. But once again, a huge thank you to Mark Allred and the entire team at Black and Gold Productions. This show would not be happening without them. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the support. I want to mention blackandgoldhockey.com, the website where... Uh, all the great writers at BNG put their work out. Bruins articles coming out each and every day. Also, an incredibly uh, awesome podcast network with a bunch of different shows on there. Um, so please check out BNG or BlackandGoldHockey.com, Black and Gold Productions website. And also, one more reminder about the links down in the description of the video. Um, we've got. NHL apparel, we've got Boston Bruins apparel, we've got NCAA college apparel. If you are in the market for any of those things, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated if you could check out those links, see if there's anything that you like. There's tons of different products to choose from, and it would really help out everyone here at BNG quite a bit. But that is going to do it for episode 23. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the episode here. I should have a guest on for next week. That's the plan, at least as of now. So um, next week's episode might be a little bit longer because we'll have a lot more discussion and back and forth between me and the guest. But um, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Good luck to the Bruins this week as this series continues. Hopefully we're going to be talking about um, a, a Bruins series win come next week but uh we'll have to wait and see how it goes over the course of this one so thank you guys again really really appreciate each and every one of you and uh with that episode 24 will be coming up but uh next friday but until then have a great weekend and talk to you soon <laughs>